Hi everyone, welcome to Immigration Updates with Abby at Migration Central of Australia. Today I want to cover the visitor visa for Australia. Now this visa is being refused a lot at the moment and there's been a lot of inquiries about the refusal rate and how the best approach might be to try and have it granted. One of the major changes that came into effect on 1st of July 2024 was the fact that a lot of people can't apply for the student visa if they arrive to Australia on a visitor visa. Which means it is likely, or we can assume that it is likely, that the government should start granting more visitor visas because people will not be able to try and transition onto a student visa afterwards. Now, let's talk about some of the basics in terms of the streams that exist for the visitor visa. There's a few streams that exist, starting with the tourist stream by applying from outside Australia, right? And this is a very basic visa. If you don't have access to the subclass 651 or the 601, then this is the probably the best visa option for you. Then you got the tourist stream and you apply within Australia. Both of these visas cost different amounts. The tourist stream from outside Australia is $195 and the tourist stream within Australia is now $490, which is significantly higher. Both of these visas can be granted for up to 12 months. And if you have a parent in Australia, uh, then it can even be granted for up to three years. But generally speaking, it is for up to 12 months. And usually that'll allow for three months travel at a time. And every three months you'll need to exit Australia and you can enter Australia again. In certain circumstances, we've also seen it be granted for six months at a time. So the person is able to come twice for six months duration. Now, the third stream we've got is business visitor stream. Now, this is if someone is coming here for business purposes and it allows them to travel to Australia. And this visa costs $195 and it is for up to three months. Then there is the approved destination status stream. Uh, we won't cover too much about that as it's not as common. Then the frequent traveler stream, again, not as common, but this is mainly for people from China. And this costs $1,435 and can be granted for stays for up to 10 years. Now, the final stream that I want to cover is the family sponsored stream, which a lot of people talk about. Now, this one is quite important and especially because it comes with the no further stay condition. It can be granted for up to 12 months and costs $195 as well. But the difference is that you have to have a permanent resident family member or citizen that sponsors a specific family member. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this and you should be able to see my screen here when we check out the eligibility section for the sponsored family stream. Now, you obviously need to be a genuine temporary entrant, which it talks about here, be a genuine visitor. Then you should also have enough money to be able to visit Australia. Um, you need to make sure that either people in Australia have enough money to support your stay, or you have enough money yourself to be able to support your stay. You need to be a sponsor and that sponsor must be suitable to sponsor you. So they can be a relative of that visa applicant, uh, the, the types of relatives that are covered are partners, parents or child, brother, sister, grandparents or grandchild, aunt, uncle, niece or nephew, or the step equivalent of any of these that I've mentioned. A sponsor can't be, for example, a fiancé, an in-law, cousin, friend or a New Zealand citizen. So it's very important to keep this in mind when considering the family sponsored visa. The other thing to know is that if you do lodge this, it will come with a no further stay condition. That pretty much means that you cannot apply for nearly all other visas while in Australia. So if, for example, if someone comes on a visitor visa to Australia, generally they could apply for something like a skilled visa or a partner visa, which is commonly used. But if someone had applied for a sponsored family stream visitor visa that would not be able to apply for the skilled visa or a partner visa or anything like that right but the chances of this being granted are much higher compared to the normal tourist stream because of that condition and because someone is sponsoring you 
Now, as a sponsor, they might be requested by the government to deposit a certain amount of funds into something that the government holds and that fund will release that money upon departure from Australia. Now, let's talk about the documents that might be required to support your visitor visa application. Now, we're gonna go over the tourist stream when you apply within Australia, but this will also apply to the other categories that we've discussed. Other than some other categories like the business, which may require an additional document from the business to support your stay, or sponsored family, which requires additional forms and documents from the sponsor to support your stay and invitation. Now, generally speaking, you need to make sure you provide accurate information as part of the visa application, right? So make sure the dates are correct, where you've traveled to, passport details, etc. Family members, um, if it requests for that information. Then you've got identity documents, which is, you might have your national ID, uh, passport, marriage certificate, divorce certificate, things like that. Then you've got a document where you need to provide evidence that you are a genuine temporary entrant to Australia. Now, this could include documents such as property, financials, um, you have a business that you run overseas or you're working and taking leave. So a leave letter of approval to support that you will have something to go back to in your home country after your visit to Australia. There have been significant refusals in recent times because the department officers are able to make decisions based on their opinion. And one of the main opinions that they use for this refusal is the genuine visitor or genuine temporary entrant criteria, right? So make sure you attach as much as you can to support this, including a statement along with documents to back up that statement. Now, other declarations that you can use is character documents. If you've got a criminal history, make sure you're able to show why you had that and why you would not be an adverse uh, visitor to Australia. So the safety of Australians is really important. Make sure you cover that if there are any criminal charges in your past. Now, additional documents are required if someone is accompanying you that is under 18, um, especially even if you're not traveling with them, you need to make sure that you have the right documentation to, which allows them to travel, especially if they're traveling independently. Now, if you have any documents that are not in English, please make sure they are translated. It is always requested that you use a NATI approved translator, which is accepted in the department. When you scan or photograph your documents, make sure they are very clear and high quality. All documents that are attached must be five megabytes or less. Otherwise, it cannot be uploaded to your application. Now, if you are providing photographs, a digital photograph is also required for the visitor visa. Um, now, this is a passport sized photograph, but digital version of that. All of these documents can then be attached to your application at the end to support your stay and you can submit it. Generally, the processing times vary for each of these visa categories and we'll go over how to check that now. And you can do this for any visas, including the visitor visas. Now, if you can see my screen here and type in global visa processing times Department of Home Affairs Australia, it'll come up with this link at the top. So once you've clicked this link, you can go on to the visa type and select which visa you're interested in to know about its processing time. Now, because this has multiple streams, it'll give you three options, tourist visa, sponsored family, or the business visitor visa. Now, let's say you were able to lodge your application today. It will not let you select a future date, but it'll allow you to understand what the processing times are. So if you have already lodged your application, then you can select which date you've lodged it. So let's say we've lodged it on 1st of July, 2024. We click submit and it says the processing times is anywhere between zero days. 50% of the applications are processed within six days and 90% within 18 days, which is quite quick. But this is for the business visitor visa. Now, if we were to go for the sponsored family stream, it varies between zero days and 28 days. So most of the applications are processed between 17 and 28 days, which is still relatively quick uh, as you can have a decision within a month of lodgement for most of the applications. Now let's check out the tourist stream. 
The tourist stream ranges from zero days to 30 days, again within a month, but most applications are processed between 10 days and 30 days. All right, so let's talk about the various reasons that you can use to travel to Australia. You might have religious events or sporting events. So you've got Easter, Christmas, you've got the Ashes, tennis, the Australian Open or the Formula One. So all of these events are reasons you can use to travel to Australia. Um, obviously, you need to make sure that you provide the right reason, especially if you have tickets to an event or something like that. You can really use that to support why you are interested to come here. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is you need strong reasons, especially if you're from countries like from Asia, Africa or South America. That's where the highest refusal rates exist across the three continents. Generally, USA um, and Europe have it a little bit easier in terms of the approval rate because most of those people are considered coming from, uh, I guess, developed countries, which means they have more of a reason to go back rather than trying to escape um, the developing countries, right? And I know this is um, discriminatory in certain ways, but that's just the way that the department looks at it. So when you prepare your application, you really have to make sure you cover all your grounds, especially if you're from one of those three continents. Now, having a good financial backing um, and being able to support your application goes a long way. That's one of the main reasons for refusal. If you have a good travel history, that will really go a long way as well because travel allows you to demonstrate that you've traveled previously to other countries and gone back to your home country. So that's everything about the visitor visas. And if you want to contact us, please do so on info at migrationcentralofaustralia.com.au. If you'd personally like to book a consultation with me, head to our website, www.migrationcentralofaustralia.com.au. If you have any questions, comment below and we'll try and get back to you with the answers.